Today we looked at two new ideas, or maybe they weren't new to everybody. They might have been new to some people and not to other people. Uh, and those two ideas were zero exponents, which is an easy one. Everybody loves that question because it's so easy. You just got to watch when there's a negative sometimes. And uh, negative exponents, and that one is trickier. So we're taking a few days to review negative exponents. And I mentioned this yesterday, but I'm going to keep bringing it up and mentioning it again. And, um, and you probably all noticed yesterday that your intuition about negative exponents was wrong. You might have thought that like, what, it, what is 4 squared? Shout out the answer. Like, what is it when you evaluate it? 16. 16. So you might have thought 4 to the negative 2 was negative 16. But we saw that's wrong. That is not what negative exponents do. And because our gut tells us that is what it does, you have to spend some time thinking about it and like eliminating that from your brain, reminding yourself, no, that's not what it does. No, that's not what it does. No, that's not what it does, right? Otherwise, we'll move on and we'll do some different things and then this will be on the test and you'll make that mistake, okay? So that's what you wanna do. And one of the ways of really getting that is by comparing what five to the three is and what five to the negative three is. Okay, so let's do that. So five to the three, how could I write that out in a long way? What does what does an exponent actually mean? We're only gonna do this kind of once today, Sarah. Very good, five times itself, three times. I've got three fives multiplied together because the exponent was three, five times five times five. And what is that? Who knows what that is? Nice, 125. You don't have to know any of these. You can use your calculator, but if you know some of them, sometimes it helps. What does a negative exponent do? Who remembers from yesterday? Yes, so this is like, off to the side, in fact, I'm gonna do it in a different color, off to the side, this is like five over one all to the negative three, because five is the same as five over one, so that works out to one over five, all to the negative three. And this is where some people struggle because fractions, depending on um, depending on what the number is and where the fraction is, you can write it different ways. Ben, your hand was going up? Um, is it the negative three or is it the Thank you. Yeah, no, it's not. Thank you for pointing that out. Whoops. To the positive three, right? That's what it's supposed to be. Awesome. Very good. So... I could write this as one over five all to the three, but sometimes we cheat and we write it as one over five to the three. Why can I do that? Because one to the three is just one. So this three is actually going on both the top and the bottom, but when it's a one, it doesn't do anything because one to the anything is just one. One times one times one times one times one. Do it as many times as you want. It's still one. Okay, so don't try to, some people get confused that we write it this way sometimes and that way sometimes. How do I know which one to do? But that's part of practicing, okay? And then that means the same thing at this point, one over five times five times five, and that is one over 125. So look what's the same and look what's different. This was 125, or you could think of it as 125 over one. And the other one is 1 over 125. That's called reciprocal. It's flipped. Look at those two and see and like get that imprinted into your brain that that's what a negative exponent does. Okay? Any questions? We'll do a few of these zero exponents. Be careful. There's three of them. They're all got a 7 involved and an exponent of 0, but they're slightly different. So what is this? Hopefully is an easy one. What is seven to the one? Jada, do you remember what seven to the zero is? Sorry, one. Super easy. And if I look, at, if I compare D and E, they're going to have different answers, and maybe that'll help me figure out which one's which. So D negative seven in brackets to the zero would be what? Who wants to guess? Sir? Not seven because it's to the zero. One. 
And then E would be negative 1 because the negative is outside the brackets. So this one's like uh, negative 7 to the 0. So the negative isn't affected by the exponent because there's no brackets. For this one, the negative is, is with the 0. So it ends up going away. And it's just 1. Is that OK? Those are like your three kind of different ones. Seven, just seven to the zero is one. Negative seven all to the zero is one. But then the other one is negative seven to the zero. So you get negative one. These are like, you know, math, like it, it comes up in math, but how often this will actually happen in other kinds of questions to us throughout the unit or throughout the course? Probably not that much. So it's good to know, but if, if you have a hard time remembering those little details of, of, of uh, rules, probably not going to be that big of a deal. Okay. All right. And one half to the negative three. So this is kind of like what I was talking about up here. Five over one is one over five. So one over two, when I flip it, I get two over one. So two over one to the positive three which is just two to the positive three, right? Which is eight. Is everybody okay with that one? When you start doing your practice later, you have, will have like one of each type of question, at least one, modeled in our notes so you copy it down i would copy down all the steps you don't have to show all those steps in your work but for a lesson i would copy them down because it helps explain how we got to eight if you look back at it later so if i'm doing a question and i get stuck i look for one in my in, in my note whether it's online or in your book and i look for one that's similar and i try to help it like get it to help me understand what you do and then i use it to solve the question i'm working on Okay, this is similar to the last one, but the last one was the whole fraction was in brackets. And this one is the negative signs just in the denominator. So again, this one is, a, is, a, is like there's all these different cases and some people find that overwhelming. But what this actually does is it just takes that part in the denominator that the negative exponent is on and it moves it to the top. So instead of di dividing, I'm now actually multiplying. You don't need the one there, but it kind of is there. I'm going to show you why in a minute. So if this was 1 over 2 all to the negative 2, the 1 would flip to the bottom. But this exponent's not on the one, so it doesn't flip to the bottom, it stays on top. Does that make some sense? And what is two squared? Four. four, so one times four is four. And I don't know if you wanna write this down, but just watch what I mean. If this was like three over two to the negative two, the three would stay on top. See how it's a little bit different? compared to the last one where the fraction was all in brackets. Like, let's do one more example here. Like if it was 3 over 2 all to the negative 2, that's 2 over 3 all to the positive 2. And again, looking at these different cases, slightly different cases, is hopefully how it, the, all the different pieces start to come together for you. Okay, one more. Uh, actually, no, we have a few more. Sorry. So what's happening in this one? I've got a numerator with a negative exponent and a denominator with a negative exponent. So both are going to flip. The 2 is going to flip to the bottom and the 3 is going to flip to the top. So I get 3 to the positive 3 over 2 to the positive 2. They both had negative exponents, so they both flip. They had different exponents. 
Three to the three is 27. 27. Three times three is nine times three again is 27. And two squared, we already did that one, it's four. Any questions? You got to ask questions if I, I, I'm getting looks that like people aren't so sure about all that because there was a lot of different cases that we went through. You don't have to fully understand it now, but I'm just trying to show you that like you move something or you, or you add brackets or take away brackets, it, it can make an important change, but it's hard until you've really got all of this to get it. So that's where when you practice and you check your answers, you'll kind of be able to see all the different types. Ben. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Yeah. To be perfect, we like to put things in lowest terms, right? We call that. So you're right. For this one, we can't. But if you could, that would be a good idea. And the answers on the page are always going to be in lowest terms. So if you want to compare your answer, yes. In this case, you could actually do 27 divided by 4. You're going to get like something 0.25 or whatever and or 0.75. And that would be fine as well because it's a nice decimal that just finishes. It's not nasty. It really depends on the situation. Not normally, probably. Um, and I don't think that's something you have to worry about too much. But what I would I would recommend, try. You know, and there may be cases throughout the course where where you would lose marks, but we'll talk about that at the time and I'll let you know. Okay. Example two, it's really more of the same. Uh, except we've got variables and notice the instructions. It says simplify, but then it says you have to express your answer with a positive exponent. This is a common thing that we do in math class just to get you practicing working with negative exponents and variables and that kind of thing. Again, you don't have to show so many steps, but I'm going to show sort of some extra steps as we go through this just to make sure that we understand why we're doing what we're doing. What do I do when I multiply powers with the same base? Because that's what I have. I have m to the negative 3 times m to the negative 7. Same base. Add the exponent. So this is going to be equal to m to the negative 3 plus negative 7. What is negative 3 plus negative 7? If you, some people just integers, they understand them, but when they do them in their head, they always get it wrong. So my goodness, start using your calculator. Negative 3 plus negative 7 equals negative 10. Try it in your head. Check it on your calculator if you have to. But what do the instructions say? I have to leave it with a positive exponent. So how do I do this? Nur? Over M. Very nice. 1 over m to the 10. Or like I was saying before, you could do the whole thing in brackets like that if you wanted to. Same idea. OK? Any questions? Okay, B, what, when I look at B, I kind of have to think about what, what it means, what's happening. I've got A cubed and B to the negative 6 inside the brackets. And all of that is raised to the negative 2. So in fact, what's going to happen is that negative 2 is going to be on both things inside. So this is going to work out to A to the 3 times negative 2, b to the negative 6 times negative 2. Three times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 2, two negatives makes a positive, 6 times 2 is 12, so b to the 12. And what do we have to do as our last step? Yeah, so how are we going to do that? It's going to move from the top to the bottom. But everything stays together. So the B stays where it is, and the A moves to the bottom. See what I mean? 
So the A is negative, but the B was already there's positive, but the B was B to the 12. That's already positive, so I leave it alone. Sarah, are you sure? Again, like if you weren't, if you find that surprising, that's why we're doing these examples because it's not necessarily clear what you would do in that case, and there will be questions in the practice that will be similar to that. Okay, two more examples, and they're similar, but they have one important difference. And again, you can look at them both together and reflect on how they're the same and how they're different. This one, I take that the this two, and I multiply it. I apply it to both the top and the bottom. So this is a to the two times two over b to the three times two, which is a to the 4 over b to the 6. That's a nice reminder of how you do exponents with fractions. The exponent applies to both the top and the bottom. And if I compare that to d, what does the negative 2 do? What does the negative do? It flips it, right? So this is going to be equal to b cubed over a squared all to the positive 2. b to the 3 times 2 is b to the 6. a to the 2 times 2 is a to the 4. Yeah? Would it matter if you put the a or the b on top in that case? Yeah, I think it has to be like this because I, because I had to flip it to manage the negative. Does that make sense? There's another way you could do this question. You don't have to know how to do both. For some people, this helps them kind of see the bigger picture and go, oh, okay, yeah, now I kind of get what's going on. So I'm going to show it, but you only have to do one or the other. What if I took – what if I did it like I, I did over here and I multiplied that negative 2 into the top and bottom? like I did over here. I would end up with a to the 2 times negative 2 is a to the negative 4. b to the 3 times negative 2 is b to the negative 6. Is everybody okay with that? See what I'm doing there? And then they're both negative, so they both have to change places. The one on top's got to go to the bottom, and the one on bottom's got to go to the top. So I end up with b to the 6 over a to the 4. So no matter how I do it, I end up with the same answer. And you always should in mathematics. A different process will not give you a different answer. Unless one of those processes is wrong. <laughs> Any questions? That was a lot. We're, but you've got some practice to do. You can ask some questions. And we're going to do even more of this tomorrow to just make sure we're on the right track. Okay? I'm going to... Hand out a worksheet, one to six, You can, but then you can clear your books. We're going to start the quiz.